Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Monday morning. And uh, I want to make sure you can hear me. So make sure you do put something in that comment section there. Uh, I'm a little echoey today, I think. Uh, you let me know. Uh, I had to take down a couple curtains for some filming we were doing, and that kind of absorbs the sound. So I apologize if it's a little bit more echoey today, but uh, I want to welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to have a great session today. Today is all about the new statistics that came out. It will surprise you uh, what, what your website's doing and what it should be doing, and, and more importantly, how you can improve your website. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Hit that subscribe button down there, turn it from red to gray. And don't forget also turn on all bell notifications so you're notified each and every time I go live. Um, so if you have a website, this is gonna be really helpful to you today. If you don't have a website, but you're thinking about making one, it's probably going to be even more helpful. I don't know which is more helpful, but I, I tell you that some of the stuff that came out about these reports will kind of blow your mind. Um, and it's, it's pretty in-depth reporting. Uh, and it's not really boring stuff. It's really pretty interesting. But it's, it's kind of cool to see how you stack up against these other websites and these other industries. But more importantly, it's really cool to see how easy it is to fix some of these things if you're not you know, in the conversion area that you want to be, if you're not with that right average. Uh, let me get my screen cleared off here. And um, guys, make really good use of this chat box. This is a time for you to ask questions, for you to, you know, tell me who you are so we can build a relationship. Who knows what I could do to help you on down the road, uh, but I can't help you if I don't know you. Uh, I don't charge for any of these sessions whatsoever, so take advantage of them you know, and uh, use them, you know, use them. Uh, and I'm going to start off first uh, by looking at some of the different categories um, of uh, conversions and what you can do about it. Um, and I'm going to look at it by a, I think, a subcategory. Uh, and I just to kind of get you warmed up, and we'll talk about your category in just a second. Um, but the thing is, I want you to be able to see um, what's going on in the industry out there uh, and how you can do something to improve, uh, you know, the amount of money you're making, you know? All right, so let me pick, let's see here, entire screen. I got that and I'm gonna click here and I'll click allow and you guys should be able to see me uh, on the screen now, on my screen on yours. Let me get a sip here while that is clicking in. Yep, I just saw it pop up. Um, and let me get over here to the screen so you can see it. That's not the one I want to show you. This is the one I want to show you, if I can get to it. This is the conversion rate by industry subcategory. Okay, so when somebody goes to a site, the way these conversion rates work is this is a percent of the people that convert. Now, what's a conversion? A conversion is where they do what you want them to do. So in other words, they come to your site and maybe your site is trying to get them to sign up for a webinar. Um, maybe your site is trying to get them to download some report you have. Maybe your site is trying to get them to buy something. So that's what is considered a conversion. When they do an action that you want them to do for whatever reason. Um, so these are the conversion rates. And this is always based on 100, 100 visits. Okay, so when you see like 2.7 here for this HVAC and utilities, uh, and this is, you know, uh, heating and air conditioning companies and all that. They get a 2.7% conversion rate. That doesn't mean that they bought a heating and cooling system. That means they converted. Um, so that probably is they made a phone call. They did an opt-in. They did something along those lines that was what they considered to be a conversion. Um, and when they do that, then, of course, you are going to get a conversion rate. All right, so let me get into depth on a couple of other of these charts, and then we're going to talk about how you can fix yours, because there's a lot of things you can do to actually fix yours. But let me pull up this other screen here. I want to share it with you. Um, okay, now this is conversion by industry. I'm going to show you next. Uh, and let me get this fitting on my screen here so that you guys can see it. Okay, this is conversion rates by industry. Um, this particular report was done by Unbounce. So let me pull it up real quick so you can see it. And I'll share right there, share screen. Hey, what's going on, Richard? My buddy Richard had lunch with him this weekend. I screwed up the address and I thought, how could he get lost? 
because I didn't send him the right address is what happened. Uh, so but we had a good lunch. Hope you enjoyed that, Richard. I know I did. Uh, I got to get down to Houston because I know you guys have some incredible food down there. Uh, so I should be sharing my other screen here, guys, with you now. Um, now, this is conversion rate by different industries. OK, so the first thing we have is an agency. Let's say you have like a digital marketing agency. They have one of the lowest conversion rates. And that's pretty funny because they're digital marketing agencies, right? Uh, and then we got real estate, you know, pretty low too, 2.8% if you see that. Um, software and services goes up a little bit. Now, if you look at the very end, catering and restaurants is at nine point, was that 9.8%? My screen's kind of small because I'm far away from it. Yes, 9.8%. And you know what's funny? I eat out a lot. Um, you know, I, I went out to dinner and lunch, I think Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so I, I went out. Um, and then I had lunch with Richard and I think, we're, I don't know if we did, when did we do that on Richard? I can't remember. That was Saturday, I think. Yeah, that was Saturday. Um, and a lot of these restaurants, a lot of these restaurants are not even claiming they're a restaurant on Yelp. It's, it's insane. It's like, you know, that is one of the places that everybody goes to, whether you like Yelp or you don't like Yelp, everybody goes there. So, you know, if you're a restaurant, you got to at least claim your uh, a restaurant there. Uh, in addition to that, they don't put their menus there. They don't. They don't give any information about the company. Uh, people will complain or compliment them, and they don't respond to it. And I'm like, why? Why would you not do that? I mean, this is exactly where you're going to get more business from, or you're going to lose business. All right, let me pull it off screen for a second, then I'm going to talk about content. Now we all have content, okay, of some sort on our website, whether it's videos, whether it's blogs, whether it's, you know, uh, product descriptions, we all have this content that we're constantly putting in front of people. Uh, and this content needs to be good content, but it doesn't need to be over the top content. And I think that's what a lot of people are trying to do is they're trying to have content that is just so in depth and so complicated and, you know, has so much information. And I'm going to show you some statistics in just a second that proves to you that you're working yourself to death for nothing. Okay. Um, and when you do that, you're, you're actually hurting your conversion rate. And that's not something you want to do. You want to improve your conversion rate. Websites, you know, it's so funny when people say, well, I built a website, so I should be good. Man, websites are something that it's something you've always, always, always got to work on. It's just the way it is. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, because things change, information changes, your products change, um, you know, what's popular in the market changes, what current events change. It's just constantly changing. And I don't want to scare anybody away from their website, but I, I need you to understand that you're going to have to do more. Now, a lot of us do uh, paid search. We have organic search. Some of us do social media. And I want to show you the difference in all of these things uh, and how you may be spending a lot of time and money and effort on things that you don't need to do all right so let me put and I'm, and I'm not saying don't do any of these things I'm just saying let me pull up the screen here uh, I'm gonna allow it right there okay so these are conversion rates by traffic channels okay so the first one is paid search it has the lowest conversion rate at what 3.0 something like that um, and then the next one is organic search Organic search is something we're really working on on Survival Cake Food right now. And then we're going to move on to uh, JR Fisher Training or JRFisher.com because organic search is free, guys. And this is stuff you can do on your site. So, you know, the, the first thing I'm going to tell you from this training and all these numbers today, uh, and, the, and the, the, one of the things I'm going to tell you is going to blow your mind in just a second. But um, the thing I want you to get that I want you to understand is a lot of this stuff is free. Organic search is free, guys. You've got to get in there and do your SEO. SEO is so very important. And then look at the last one there. Social. Social gets more conversions than it looks like uh, than um, um, your organic search and your paid search put together. And a lot of us are not doing social. I just mentioned that um, a lot of these restaurants are not doing um, anything on Yelp and Yelp is where all these people go. And I'm like, wow, why would you not do that? Why would you not take advantage of something that's free like that? Because, you know, Yelp is kind of like social and kind of like organic. It's both. Um, and, and it just, it blows my mind when I see restaurants 
or, or hotels or whatever your business is or hair salons. You know, a lot of people use Yelp for a lot of things, not just restaurants, um, but they don't use it. It's crazy. We ate at a restaurant yesterday called uh, Julie's Noodles. Now, Julie's Noodles, that is not a very great name for a restaurant. OK, it's not. It's just not a good name for a restaurant. Uh, it's in a uh, shopping center underneath the interstate back in a corner where if you were driving down the road, you would never see it ever. You'd never see it. We went there on a Sunday and they opened at 12 and we got there right around 12 and there was a line to get in the door. I mean, a line, a long line to get in the door. Uh, and the reason that long line was there is obviously because they have good food, but nobody would have known that if they hadn't have utilized Yelp. Um, I found them on Yelp. I drove over there and basically all they do is noodles. They have noodle soups, they have uh, dumplings, but that's what they specialize in. Their prices were great. The food was phenomenal, but they utilized social guys and they utilized Yelp. Are you utilizing these things that can help you out that are free? Uh, and I'm gonna bounce back to uh, SEO again. How good is your SEO on your site? What tools are you using to analyze your site? Because these are the things that really, really matter to your site, guys. If you don't have those things there, um, then you're missing out. Plucky Chickadee, what's going on? Good to see you today. Uh, saw the nice picture of your daughter the other day. Very cute uh, picture of her. Uh, we got Paul in the house also. Paul says, try pulling the mic closer, echo sounding. Yeah, you must have missed the beginning, Paul. It's not the mic. Um, I had to remove some stuff from my office here, so that's why we've got that echo today. Um, I, I normally have these sound shields that go around me, and I don't have them today, so I apologize for that. Uh, that's what that is. It's not a microphone. Um, let's see, what has Richard got to say here? TripAdvisor is used more in some places like Mexico than Yelp. Yeah, and you know when I was in Bangkok, uh, Richard, they had a different one down there that they used. So whatever your geographic area is, you got to kind of be tuned into that. Um, so know your best options by doing market research as part of your business regularly to stay on top of a lot of relevant data to grow. Definitely, Richard, that's really good input and I appreciate you putting that up there. That's something that is very helpful to a lot of people. Uh, and let me look at some of my other uh, information I want to share with you guys today. I think it will really surprise you, especially when it gets to the content part. Um, reading ease insights. This is really interesting, guys. How easy is it to read your uh, website? And I wanna, I'm going to show you statistics on this and how you can work less and have a better reading ease statistic. And reading ease is, in other words, how easy is it to read your website? How easy is it to read your content? The easier it is, the longer they will stay on your site. And I'm going to show you a graph with that in just one second here. Let me get another sip. Um, but yeah, that matters a lot. In copywriting circles, um, the received wisdom is that clarity comes above all else. Okay, so the clearer you can be. If you're looking to put up the fewest hurdles possible between audiences and offer, it usually makes sense to keep things very, very basic. Um, the data, however, complicates the equation. Uh, it's really simple is always better. No, not all the time, not 100% of the time, uh, but it does help considerably if it's more simple. In other words, ensuring the readability of your pages is key for some marketers and relatively unimportant for others, depending on your industry. Uh, cybersecurity companies, for instance, don't appear to benefit from simpler language when landing pages promoting mobile apps do. So uh, let me pull up this one screen here, guys, and let you see this so you can see. And all these stats are for 2021. So these are all very, very current, unless you're watching this video and it's a recording and you watch it like in 2030 or something like that, then it wouldn't be so current. Uh, let me get that off the screen there and let me get over to here. Okay, so conversion rates by reading ease uh, and these are software type companies, okay? Um, so we've got apps and devices here. We've got um, software baseline. We've got cybersecurity. We've got data and infrastructure. And you can see it, it varies according to your industry and where you're at. So you've really got to know that and you've got to know what your industry standards are. Now I'm going to get into the language. The language is super important too. Uh, and let me pull up my statistics on language here to share with you guys. The language is really pretty interesting. And, and all of this here, this reading language stuff, um, 
is, is something that kind of blows your mind. Okay, so here it goes. Uh, I'm going to put this up on the screen here. You're going to see this in just one second. Uh, share screen. Uh, share screen. There we go. And we want to do my entire screen. Okay. And I'm going to allow it. So you guys should see my screen now. Um, <clears throat> these are the statistics that are crazy. Uh, let me let me get back to putting some of these comments on the screen before I do that, though. Uh, let me unshare the screen here because I want to get all y'all's comments in here. Uh, let's see here. Plucky Chickadee says, making chili today. Oh, cool. Uh, and prepping my veggies for chicken pot pie. I'm going over to your house. Who's coming with me? Richard, you want to go over to uh, Tyann's house? That's her name is Tyann. Um, uh, we'll check out using Yelp. Not sure if it would work for chat box marketing. Uh, I don't know, but there's, there's something out there that will uh, because other people use chat bot uh, marketing. Uh, also training and on an SEO software. Really good, Tyann. That's good stuff. Um, that's excellent. Uh, next comment here is from Richard. It says, I remember in Santa Monica, there was a restaurant with the name Bad Sushi. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, uh, there's, there was one in San Diego called Faux P-H-O King Good Soup. Uh, so it was Faux King Good Soup. Um, yeah, you got to be careful saying that on YouTube. And I'm trying to watch the language thing. But that, that was what they had for the name of the place. Got another comment here. What was Richard got to say here? Richard's awake today. Good, man. Uh, what do you think of adding chat features on a website? If I'm traveling, I may not see chat questions for several hours. <clears throat> so I'm on the fence on it. <clears throat> Here's the thing with chat. And I think that's a really good question. Chat is awesome if you monitor it and you monitor it with somebody who knows what's going on. Okay, now you can have these companies do chat and they're all across the board. Some of them are just awful. You know, when somebody asks a question, all they do is ask for their information and send it to you. So it's not really a chat. It's BS. Okay, it's not a chat. Um, and then some of them actually will have all the information in your company. They can answer questions. They can do all that. Those are very useful. So if you can't fall in that spectrum there, which we can't. Our company cannot. I don't have somebody devoted um, to answering chat all day that's knowledgeable about our products. Um, and I don't have a company that's knowledgeable enough about our company to actually monitor it. Nor do I get enough chat um, to actually hire somebody and really educate them on it because it's not worth it to me. So the next level down from chat box or chat boxes, um, uh, and chat bots are different from chat boxes. Let me go clarify that. Um, is to have a um, question and answer type thing. So we have like a chat on ours. And what happens is when they click on it, the little chat pops up and it has a, a FAQ. So they can click on the FAQ and they can try to find one of their answers there. And if they can't, they can submit a ticket. Okay. And then that ticket is sent to one of our team members. And then somebody on the team will actually respond to them within Kartra. Now, this is built into Kartra. Guys, if you don't have Kartra, you need to check out Kartra. You really do. I will have a link in the description at the end of this video where you can get Kartra uh, for a $1 trial. But that's one of the features of Kartra, along with email marketing and sales pages and everything else. But use my um, affiliate link. It is my affiliate link, full disclosure. Uh, but you can get it for $1 when you do that. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let's get back over here. I want to look at these statistics real quick. Because this is this readability thing. <laughs> this is pretty funny stuff. Uh, let me go here and allow, and then you guys should see my screen. Uh, I'm gonna wait for a second for it to pop up. And I appreciate all these comments, guys. These are super, super helpful. Uh, love getting these comments. All right. So look at this readability. Reading ease score. Um, so the higher it is, the better it is. So reading ease score 91 to 100 is very easy. Grade level is five, okay? And a, a book that may relate to it would be Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I've never read a Harry Potter book, so I know nothing about it. But we want to have a, a reading level, for the most part, that's pretty easy. So if you're writing on your website, uh, in the United States, you're going to write on a fifth grade level. 
a fifth grade level. Now the reading uh, ease ability score goes down as it gets tougher, okay? Uh, uh, easy sight would be sixth grade level, not much of a difference there. And that would once again be Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which I have never read these books, so I don't know what that means. Uh, but I guess these are their examples of this. Uh, reading score of 71 to 80, which is fairly easy, which I, I would not go over this unless you have a technical site, is seventh grade. And that would once again be Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Uh, and then you're going to get into standard uh, writing. Now, this is like business type stuff. This is when it gets boring. This is 61 to 70, and it's standard. Uh, and this is only an eighth to ninth grade, uh, grade level. Um, so you don't have to be brilliant in your writing. And that's Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Uh, once again, don't know anything about that. The next reading level score is 51 to 60, and that's fairly difficult. And that's only a high schooler. Um, this is like an article um, for something like that. Uh, and he says, for which I apologize. Um, so uh, 31 to 50 would be difficult. Um, and that would be college. And that would be Paradise Lost. I have no idea what Paradise Lost is. But what we're getting across here is the more difficult this reading is, the less they're going to read what you have to say on your website. So the idea is not to get super technical on stuff. Um, it's to make the reading level much easier so that they can consume it. Um, and then the next thing we get into is word counts. Because I have a lot of people say, well, how many words do I put on my page? Uh, and I've got a chart on that right now. And I want to share that with you. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 da. Ty Ann's got something in there. Let me put that up on the screen real quick. She says... Uh, I think chat works best for lead generation personally, uh, but could do it for some customer service uh, too and doing lots more interactive stuff. Yeah, as long as you've got the bandwidth to do that. I mean, we don't. We stay so busy with orders. Our, our weekend was slammed. Um, I was talking to Richard about that, how much our sales went up. Um, and I think a lot of it had to do with the world illness that, that, that was out there uh, where people actually understood that you, you could run out of food. I mean, there could be a food shortage. It was a serious thing. Uh, and if, if you if you don't know anything about food shortages, go to Amazon, grab my book. It's called The Great American Food Shortage. Let me put this in here. Get the book, The Great American Food Shortage by J.R. Fisher. Now, I wrote this book, I think 2016, 17, something like that. And everybody thought I was insane because this book talked about how there could be weather patterns or there could be world illness and it could interrupt our food supply. And everybody thought it was nuts, right? They thought it was crazy. Now everybody wants the book. Um, so it is on Amazon. You can buy it directly from us too. Uh, but it's a good book that explains everything. For less than 20 bucks, you can learn what you should do, what you shouldn't do, what you should store, all that good stuff. Uh, and it, it really explains a lot of this for you. Uh, okay, so let's look at the word count thing. I want to share my screen once more. I'm sure, I'm sorry for doing so many screen shares, but I really want to get this information to you guys because you can use this on your site. These are all fixes for your site, guys. These are things that you can do on your site that are going to help you out. Now, the chart on the left are the number of words, okay? And then on the right, you've got reading ease score. So as you can see, um, when you've got um, less words, you know, 100 or whatever, um, your percent of conversion is much, much higher. The more words you put on your site, the, the conversion goes down on that left-hand chart there. Now, please understand this is not true for every single industry. This is an overall average. If you have cybersecurity, you're going to need to have more words on your site to explain what the heck you're doing. Um, the chart on the right there is a reading ease score, okay? Uh, and as you see right there, um, as and, and it's got the score up there, the professional, the college, whatever it is. Uh, as you can see, as that goes up, um, the reading ease goes up. So that's something to consider. You know, how many words are you going to put on there? How easy is it going to be to read those words? Uh, what are you going to do? You know, what are you going to do? Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to read through the comments to see if I missed anything here. Um, put some more comments in there too, guys. I mean, just because I'm talking about this, and I know it's a little complicated, but I want you to see how easy it is to really fix your site by doing things like having less words. I mean, that's pretty easy fix, right? 
um, writing at a fifth grade level. That's pretty easy stuff, right? And here's the thing to remember. We want to go with the numbers. Okay, you always want to go with the numbers. Um, let's say you want to dye your hair blue and you want to go out and you want to get a date. Okay, you want to dye your hair blue and you want to go out and get a date. Now, certainly, you could dye your hair blue and find somebody that wants to date you. That makes sense, okay? But if you don't dye your hair blue, okay, then you're going to have more people that are going to want to date you, okay, if you're, if you're in the dating thing. Now, think of this for your website. If I write at a fifth grade level, okay, I'm not going to offend anybody. Nobody's going to be offended if I write at a fifth grade level. They're going to go, well, this is pretty basic writing, okay? But if I write at a super high level, some people will really enjoy it and like that high level in-depth stuff, but I'm going to miss out on a whole lot of other people. So what we want to do is we want to play the number game, guys. Uh, and the number game, guys, is that I'm going to do something that's going to appeal to more of the masses on my website. So I want a lower word count, and I also want a lower and easier reading level if I want to get to where I want to get to, and that is to have higher conversions on my site, because that's what this is all about. And all these statistics that I'm sharing with you today um, actually are uh, things that you can do on your website. Now, here's an interesting chart I want to bring up for you guys real quick. Uh, I know I got a lot of charts today. I did a lot of research for this, but I want you guys to really see this so you understand how you can apply this in your life and so that you can make more money. Okay, that's what I want you to do. But check out this chart here. This is the median conversion rate by conversion type. So if you are marketing online, the lowest conversion rate you're going to get is a phone call. A phone call is going to be the lowest one there is. Um, the next one is going to be uh, um, tracking, okay? So that's going to be a little bit more. Uh, the next one's going to be a mixed one, okay? And then the next one's going to be a form that they fill out. But look at the last one there. What should you be going after as far as conversion on your site? It should be probably clicks. You know, now if you've got to do these other things, I understand it. But clicks are the easiest thing to get a high conversion on than anything else <clears throat> that's out there. You know, just go for clicks in the beginning. Get people into your funnel. Um, let's see. In chats, we keep it light and easy to read and go through. Yeah, that's that's a good point, uh, Tyann, to do that because don't go over anybody's head. Don't try to don't try to impress people with how technically you know advanced you are and how how smart you are. And, and what a genius you are okay that, it, it just does, it comes off as pretentious and it also costs you conversions um so you don't want to do that and guys keep those comments coming in that chat section that's very very helpful um i i really do appreciate you you know putting your comments in there asking questions in there and the other thing is it's really useful to anybody watching this video anybody watching this training can watch this and see what you're saying and go, oh, I didn't realize that. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, so, you know, put that stuff in there. It's just so helpful on um, this, this training I'm doing. I'm looking at my other charts here. This is sadness and fear chart. I don't want to do that one there. Um, so what can, you, what can you learn from all this? When it comes down to the basics here, you want to learn. You want to explore insights from all these different industries. Um, you want to see how your landing pages are stacking up against the baselines, okay? Um, that doesn't mean you should always be at the top, but you need to see kind of where you should be. Uh, and then you got to work on building it. You got to apply the data that I've uh, given you today on your own campaigns. You want to create a variant, uh, one or more variants, do an A-B test, which you can also do in Kartra. Like I said, there's going to be a link for that below um, so that you can try some of these other insights. Uh, and then you want to optimize it. You want to keep changing it and making it better and better and better. Keep in mind that the data analysis reveals trends and tendencies rather than absolutes. So it's not always absolutes. Um, you're making informed decisions when you apply these learnings, uh, but testing is still your best way to figure out what's gonna be best for your company. Um, and then la last one is learn, okay? Again, you gotta you know, learn is at the top and it's at the bottom because you always gotta do it, you gotta keep it up. <clears throat> the reports I gave to you today are aggregate data, uh, but your optimization efforts yield fresh new learnings, new things that are going on, um, things that you can apply on your site, things that you can optimize with. Uh, let's see here. Any other comments, guys? Go ahead and throw them in there. We're, we're approaching about 30 minutes now, and I like to keep it around 30 minutes. For those of you uh, who haven't been here before <clears throat> or are new, 
two things. I always have to clear my throat in the morning. I don't know why. Uh, and I usually keep it around 30 minutes, something like that. Normally, I do these Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And guys, I want you to put in the comment section, I'm teetering on if I should do these on Fridays or Saturdays. I'm thinking about just doing it three days a week. Um, so put in that comment section, do you like Fridays better? Do you like Saturdays better? Um, if you're watching this and it's not live, you can put it in the comment section below. If you're live right now, please, everybody that's on this call, just put on their Friday or Saturday. Or if you want both, put both. Just put the word both or put Friday or put Saturday. Just stick that in the chat section because uh, I want to make it convenient for you guys uh, and easy to show up. You know, if it's difficult for you, obviously you can't come. And if you're watching this as a replay, uh, of course, just put in there both Friday or Saturday, and I'll know exactly what you're talking about because you're answering this question that I'm asking you here. Um, I have a lot of videos. It's approaching 1,200 videos right now um, on uh, this particular channel. Um, let's see here. We've got another comment here. Saturday is uh, Tyann. She's saying Saturday. Okay. Uh, and the rest of you, answer up. Richard, Paul. Eric, you guys go ahead and put an answer in there so I know what is more convenient for you. Uh, do you want Friday, Saturday, uh, or both? Okay, what do you want in that uh, for, for these live sessions? Uh, what's going to work better for you? Uh, because I got to know. I got to know. If I don't know, I can't, I can't do what you need. Uh, this channel is really set up to help you grow your online business, to help you out. Uh, and I hope, I'm hoping you get good information out of this, guys. I do a lot of research for all my trainings. Um, I never give you training that isn't something I haven't tried or researched and I know it works. Um, so I can't try every single thing on the internet, obviously. Um, but I let you know if it's something that I physically do. Like Kartra, I talk about Kartra a lot. And I talk about it a lot because it's very profitable. Uh, it helps people out. They get good um, you know, results from it. They make more money off it. So check out Kartra. That will be in the description below. And I will get my sound uh, shields back up here. I know it's just, it's just too echoey without those sound shields, um, but I will put those back up so the echo is not here. I do apologize for that. This was a uh, quick impromptu thing I had to do this morning, um, and we did some recordings for my wife's channel the other day. So, uh, yeah, we had to do that. Um, so that's what I got for you today. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you've got any other questions, feel free to put them in that chat section now. If you're not watching this live, put it in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button down there. If you haven't done it, turn it from red to gray. Don't forget, ring the bell, turn on all bell notifications so you're notified each and every single time I go live. Guys, you are awesome. Uh, I really appreciate your support. I appreciate you supporting this channel. Um, and uh, is, do I still have that thing on there? Let me take a look here. Um, I don't know. I got to check. Before I say anything about it, I got to check for it. Uh, they do have like a thing that you can actually support a channel you click in the box there and they have this like dollar sign thing if you want to donate to the channel uh, i never talk about it which i probably should but that's it's just my thing all right guys i really appreciate you being here appreciate all your input uh thank you so very much don't forget put in there friday saturday or both so i know what you want uh and i'm getting ready to click end this session and once i end session you'll have to put it in the comment section thanks so much for being here i'll see you guys on wednesday love you